Casual Diary Podcast, episode 190. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Massey, and I'm glad that you are here today and that you're listening. I've said it before, and I've said it again. One of the best ways to go out there to build your business, to attract the investors, to get those customers, to tell everybody who you are and what you do is to educate so that you can dominate your particular marketplace and area. One of the best methods for educating and dominating today is obviously right there on your phone. If you say, what what does that mean, Jay? Well, obviously, many of you are listening in an audio format right now, but we all know that video consumption is on the rise between Facebook and YouTube. And oh my gosh, when it comes to being able to distribute your message, there are many, 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 many channels through which you can do this today. And the barrier has never been lower. But none of that matters if you still don't have a strategy and you don't know what you're doing. And today's guest is going to help you figure that out. Today we have with us Mary Jo Cranmore. She's former Good Morning America field producer, local NBC and ABC news producer, and partner in the content marketing agency, Client Cycle Marketing. Now, what does that mean? That means she knows video and can make you and I look good. And most importantly, if you have ever struggled with the words, who am I? What does my business mean? And how on earth do I communicate that to perfect strangers? I'm guessing she has a clue. So let's find out what she has to say and how she can help you and I, and most importantly, build that cash flow. Help me welcome Mary Jo. You there? I am. Hi, Jay. How are you? So far, so good. Glad that you are here. Um, thank, thanks for taking the time off the lake to, to you know, <laughs> chat with us a little bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, many people who have listened for a while, they know the first question I'm about to ask you. And you don't, which is great for me and (laughs) possibly terrifying for you. (laughs) I look at today's entrepreneurs a lot like yesterday's superheroes. So, you know, you can take Wonder Woman and you can call Black Widow and you've got Spider-Man and Superman and all those things. And I look like entrepreneurs, I think they do the same thing as superheroes. They get dressed up occasionally. They uh, (laughs) use their special skills to save people from their own mess and hopefully Mm -hmm. make the world better. That's kind of the same thing. That's right. Yeah. However, just like a superhero, before the superhero was super, they were just a person for the most part. And they got maybe bit by a spider, some radioactive energy (laughs) happened, and they had an origin story. They started somewhere. So before you were doing all of these great things and teaching and helping entrepreneurs educate their marketplaces and dominate through video, etc., what I would really like to know is, who is Mary Jo Cranmore? Well, uh, I am an entrepreneur myself. And I knew that because I'm terrible at jobs. And <laughs> <laughs> wow. I knew that, yeah, yeah, I knew that because I was terrible at jobs. But here's the thing. Uh, I was lucky enough to find a thread of what I was really good at way back when. And the thread was I really cared about stories and I cared about television and cool people on TV. And I cared about what was going on in the world. So the only thing I could think of to do would be to go to journalism school. (laughs) And I thought, you know, it's, I get to write stories about people and ask, and I'm really nosy, by the way, I get to ask a lot of questions and find out what's going on with them and find out why 
why they're doing what they're doing. Well, journalism school's for me. So I uh, transferred. I was at Providence College and moved over to University of Wisconsin in Madison, which is a fantastic place. And I went to journalism school and film school sort of at the same time. Um, because I wasn't sure if I was going to go the more creative, uh, the creative route of film, or if I wanted to jump right into TV news. And uh, the practical side in me pushed me towards TV news, so that's what I did. Um, I worked, uh, believe it or not, I started out in politics. I was, you know, that's the ultimate storytelling, right? Uh I mean, (laughs) (laughs) the ultimate storytelling. And uh, I was a a producer's assistant for... um, Dick Kay, who was a very well-known political reporter back in the day in Chicago. And that was just a fantastic experience and showed me how much I really did not want to be in politics. (laughs) (laughs) It was great. It was great. And, you know, I have to say, I've had several of those experiences where I think I want to go in a direction and I get there and I go, ew, this is it. I don't want this. Um, So I was able to, you know, move away from that and do other you know, sort of move as a regular producer. And boy, when you're a regular producer, you move all over the country. I was fortunate enough to work with some fantastic people uh, along the way. Um, Shepard Smith was one of our reporters and Susie Culver was a sports gal in West Palm and just uh, Dan Lothian from NBC, just all these amazing people who are doing really, really good work. And at the time they were just kids starting out like me. (laughs) So it was fun. It was a, it was a, it was a fun ride. We all sort of lived together and had no money, you know, as starting out in, in news reporting, it's very, very, uh, hard to make a living. So you're all like six people in an apartment kind of a thing. Um, so we did, we did have a lot of fun. And, um, finally I made my way to, uh, Miami, uh, and hurricane Andrew came through and I was like, damn, this place is going to fall into the ocean. I better get out of here. (laughs) You know, they say the same thing about us in California, but... (laughs) (laughs) That's right. That's right. So um, I went to a station in Portland, Maine. I moved up there in a blinding snowstorm from Miami, and everybody thought I was nuts. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, some people might not even know where Maine is. You (laughs) (laughs) you might be the second person I've ever talked to to say (laughs) that they've been there. But okay. Well, I didn't know it was me. First, my friend who was a a reporter I worked with somewhere along the line called me and said, I have a executive producer job here in Portland. Would you like it? And I said, "Uh, Portland, Oregon is too far away from my family in New England. And he was like, no, 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 Portland, Maine. <laughs> and <laughs> so I thought, okay, well, you know what? It's, it's, it was only a couple hours from my, my mom, who was getting older at the time. I thought, let's, let's give this a shot. So I fell in love with Portland, Maine, and it really has some wonderful restaurants. I mean, there's just a lot of great stuff about Portland to talk about. And I ended up living in, in or around Portland for about 15 years. Um, which is, I never thought I was going to get off the train in Portland, Maine, as they say, but I did. And, uh, that's where, you know, working as an executive producer for three or four years and then having the good luck to come across a, a assignment for good morning America. Um, when we went into Iraq, the first kid to be killed in Iraq was from Maine. Uh. Um, so that's how that happened. They needed somebody on the assignment. And I was like, boy, this is a terrible, terrible assignment. Um, and you know, the, the thing is, the thing I learned from being in TV news is you can talk to anyone. If you can talk to someone at the worst time of their life, which is what, if you're on the news, it's probably the worst time of your life. Right. Um, or you've won the lottery. There's very little in between. <laughs> well, hold on, hold on. Winning the lottery for some could also be the worst time of their life. That's very true. That's very true. So I figured I could, I learned this skill of being able to talk to anybody. And my inspiration uh, has been Bill Geist. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Um, he works for CBS Sunday Morning. I think now he has Parkinson's. I'm not sure. But Willie Geist is his son. And Bill Geist did a segment every, every week called everyone has a story and he would go to the New York public library and pull out a, you know, a phone book somewhere. And he would 
plunk his thumb down and go, okay, Bill Nelson in Ottumwa, Iowa, you're my story this week. Uh-oh. Yeah. And you know what? Everyone does have a story. Right. And what I learned from him was it takes a very talented, inquisitive journalist to be able to pull that out of people. And that's why when you're an entrepreneur, it's very difficult sometimes to see your own story. Oh, darn near impossible. Exactly. Because you're standing on it. It's like the end of your nose. It's plain to everyone else, but you can't see it. Well, what's worse than that is that we end up, uh, at least I know, okay, before I say we, I'm going to say me. (laughs) (laughs) Me end up with uh, the whole, what do I have to say and who on earth wants to hear anything about me? But this Mm -hmm. becomes your very thing that you're good at. That's right. That's right. Because, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just, it's that. People don't see, and look, I am, I am among the people who don't see it. You know, I have also been, since I'm always behind the scenes, I did not get in front of a camera until I was 40 years old Uh and right. And I was not, I was not driven to be the center of attention, which is funny to most of the people who know me because I am, usually I'm like the, you know, clown of the party. But in this function, I find it fascinating to be able to hear what people are saying and, oh, there's something there and just sort of travel down that route. And you'd be surprised at what comes out of people, what things they don't know about themselves and that they just blow off as not important, that no one else will care about this or no one else needs to know. And they're just not, they're wrong about it. They're just wrong about it. And it takes somebody like me to be able to say, hey, you know what? I know somebody who wants that. I'm also a connector. Um, and to be able to see someone's value uh, and what they have to share, I think that's what my job is. So that's why I do what I do. And, you know, there are a couple of things that you've mentioned, okay, more than a couple, but uh, as we're talking that I think I want to make sure everybody picks up on. I mean, you you called yourself nosy, and I'm like, <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I'm like, all right, yeah, I get that. But I, what I really <laughs> interpret that to mean is that you just care. You you care, yeah. and therefore, naturally, you don't need prompting to come up with questions about oh, what no. someone just said. You just like, oh, you, you can talk, you can ask questions all day. But right. what I want people to hear is that learning that skill, learning to ask questions, and as you said, talk to anybody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, that's totally a skill set that can be learned, uh, you know, obviously mm-hmm. over time. Now, I, I'm not saying you have to go down the good morning America route and go through this, all this new <laughs> stuff to make it happen. But that's how it came out for you. Yeah. Right. And, that's right. You know, through the things that we often are, are some of our greatest opportunities are disguised in ways, you know, mm-hmm. that we're not considering. I mean, you thought you were on your way to Oregon, you know, but right. <laughs> <laughs> go oh, <figure>. no. <laughs> <laughs> not Oregon, not no. Oregon. No. no, no offense to anyone listening in Oregon, but you know, it was Maine <laughs> that won this time. And that's, that's what I find that's interesting. But one of the most important things that you said, and I think this is key, and I would love to hear more about this. You mm. said that there were a number of times in which you got to learn not so much what you wanted to do, but the things that you knew, you now knew, I really don't want to do this. Yeah. That implies a couple of things. One, you were unsure but took action anyway. And two, you knew when to say, you know what, enough of this. It's time to change direction and go somewhere else. Oh, yeah. Where did that come from? Wow. Um, I am somebody who... I am a risk taker. I will definitely say that because I found myself in some pretty tight spots and I'm currently in a tight spot. So, you know, living through things, you know, the only way out is through. And I'm, I'm not, I know that I can come out the other end because I've done it. And that's one of those things that like, when you, when you make mistakes, when, when I come across people who are so terrified of making mistakes, I have a few in my own family that, very much ridicule my my way of doing things, which is, hey, I'm going to try. Because my, my father was a CEO of a large company. And his thing to me was always, why not? Let's try. Right. And that gave me permission to go down a road and maybe make a mistake. But if you look at it as, a, as what have I picked up from this experience 
Because I always do. I always, even if it's just the resiliency to say, well, this was a mistake. Um, if whatever I have picked up from that, I have always used again, somewhere down the, I don't know where I'm going to use it, <laughs> but now I've got, now I've got a couple of drivers and some really great, you know, uh, pitch putt things. And I've got some cool tools in my bag, right. you know, so it may not, you know, I don't, sometimes I use the Zelda thing where I've got like the knife and the, and the, and the little potion and all this stuff. <laughs> That's true too, right? You get, you pick those up as you go and that people who are gamers will get that. Like the yeah. whole point of going to the mountain was to get the dagger, right? right? And now we've got to move on. So you can't look at anything. I, the insurance company web, uh, you know, commercials about, Hey, they get married and they buy a house and then all of a sudden they're retired on the porch. It doesn't <laughs> it it doesn't really work like that and <laughs> only in that 30 second commercial. Only in the 30 second commercial and I hope to God it doesn't work like that for most of the people on this call because I think that the part of it, the journey of it and the going, "Oh boy, I made a mistake." Even in the face of some like I have some very big people who are looking for me to make a mistake or looking for me yeah. to be successful. You can't care. And it's taken me a long time to get to that place too, where I don't, I can't care about that. Right. You know, that that's not my job right. to care about that. Now, so for, for everyone listening, just in case, I don't want to lose anybody here. What she was referencing was one of the greatest video games of all time, known as Legend of Zelda. <laughs> if you don't know about it, you need to go. Ocarina of Time. Ocarina of Time. <laughs> you just don't understand. They're like, what? They're talking about a video game. I love it. Yes, it was the best thing ever. If you're ever. Like, oh, how on earth? They're like, how old are these people? Anyway, <laughs> the point is, it was a great game. You should have been there. And you. it's not too late. Go back. And you may need the original Nintendo if you've ever seen one. I know. Those. Well, I definitely, I'm going to be 50 this year. So, uh, you know, I, I did not, I started out in TV news with a typewriter and no access to any kind of internet thing. Oh, oh my And goodness. now, I know, I know. And now we're in a totally different place. So I can honestly say like the the technology curve has been part of my life for Dude, sure you get scooped by twitter <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure, for you're, for like, sure. you're like how did how, yeah. i was good at, uh, yeah yeah oh, you gotta beat the kid with the cell phone yeah forget it it, no. it it's a whole different <laughs> world in your place but there's something that you mentioned that i want to make sure you said the only way out is through and yes uh, i agree with you a hundred percent now you said that you were able to to give yourself permission to make a mistake. Here's the question. Mm -hmm. Why do you think so many entrepreneurs are unable? I think there's a ton that are on the sidelines. There's a lot of people who have something oh, yeah. of value to offer, but they won't give themselves permission to fail. And they're sitting on the sidelines because they want to get it right the first time. Yeah. Um, well, I'll tell you something, this goes, flows directly into the video conversation because a lot of the reason why people don't do video is because they're afraid of looking stupid. And I am here <laughs> to tell you that if you are afraid to look stupid, you are not, you will not have a future as an entrepreneur. Part of being an entrepreneur is looking stupid and that it's just, okay, okay, hold on. Say it has that again. to be that way. I just want people to hear that and hear the <laughs> fact that you, you're, you're just like you're happy about it and that it's relaxed. One more time, they need to hear that. Part of being an entrepreneur is looking stupid, and what that means is if you are. I was on a call this morning with a, a client who has to be right, which means he's uncoachable, unteachable, um, and has no room for new information. That is death when it comes to being an entrepreneur because right. you are constantly looking to innovate as an as an entrepreneur you have to be willing to say you know that's not working as well as i want it to work what did i do let's follow back and let's see how i can fix that that means somewhere you were wrong i mean i still have a friend you know who uh, believes in things that she believed in 1992, even though she's a completely different person now, <laughs> she has not added that new information. All of that living has gone, it's not, I hope it's not wasted, but it's, it's gone sort of by her. And um, she has not moved forward, that's exactly what you're saying, with video or anything else until it's absolutely perfect. And perfect, right, 
all of those things are just euphemisms for getting it right out of the box. There just is no such thing anymore. You know, the internet and everything, our technology is evolving so fast. Experts on Twitter or Facebook, they still don't know everything. And if they're smart, they will tell you that. I don't know everything. I'm learning as I go, but this is what I have learned. Yep. Those yep. are the best ones. Those are the best ones. Well, and you just is something I just want to underscore for everybody. Uh, it's not like uh, I, I've met Mary Jo before, even though you're hearing some of the same things, especially if you've been a listener for a while, because uh, Mary Jo, you don't know this. But one of the phrases I often say is there are two things you cannot do simultaneously. You cannot learn and look good. It just doesn't <laughs> right. happen. <laughs> right, and right. if you ever yeah. doubted that, just, yeah, record yourself doing anything. You're like, oh, God, it does not. It never looks good at the beginning. Oh, God, it's so awkward and weird. And, you know, the thing is, I when I teach video to people, I say to them, I want you to record video about stuff you know, like your vacation or your kids, you know, a flute lesson or whatever it is, <laughs> record a video about that, something you love, something that's really important to you, and then keep those videos and move toward doing videos about your work and start and keep them all because I want to show you how terrible you were in the beginning yeah. and how far you've come in a short time. Yeah. And that will bring you confidence. You know, what's funny is that we've had, uh, I've run into some of our listeners as well as some people who look at our YouTube channel and who have volunteered the information Things like, wow, you're much better than you used to be. <laughs> and I'm like, thanks. You've been listening thanks a while. A while. You know? yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> but that's part of the process, isn't it? That's yeah. part of the journey that you were referring to. Now, one of the things that I, I want to delve into just for a small second is just like every superhero, there comes that point where they realize, hey, I got a superpower. Yeah, yours developed through some trials, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But we go, I have a superpower. I can make a difference. I can help people. But you still have to make that second most important decision. I will go out there and offer my unique ability to the world mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in some form of fashion, quote unquote, on my own. For most people, that's that's a total terrifying moment and they never cross that line. Yeah. How did you manage to muster up the courage to say, you know what? I'm planting my flag. This is who I am. And this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to make sure if it kills me, you will tell your story. Okay. You probably figured this out by now, but I care. Here's what I mean by that. You must care. Many people are going to ask you many questions about the business that you're out there looking to build. And you are going to doubt yourself from time to time, but that's okay. You must care more than that doubt. Most importantly, that's where that courage, that's going to be the source for most of you. That's where that courage is going to come from, to go out there and do it anyway, to say, hey, here's my product, here's my service. It's definitely something that is needed. Guys, you can make it happen. It's going to be awesome. Just go out there and take one more step towards it. No matter what you think you need to do, just take the next step, and I think you'll be a little bit closer. Speaking of next steps, you might want to pick up a copy of my 10 Steps to Creating Wealth in Any Economy, also known as the Cashflow Diary book. You can get a free, uh, a free electronic copy by sending a text message to 72000, that's 72000, 72000, and the keyword is book, B-O-O-K. Do that real quickly, and what will happen for you is you will get a link, give us your details, and you'll be able to go ahead and and download a copy of the book and begin reading it and going through it and beginning some of those steps that you need to take to make things happen. Guys, it's going to happen one step at a time, one day at a time, one thought at a time. I know we wish you could happen in a weekend or within a 30 minute episode like they show you on HGTV. It just doesn't work that way. But here's the good news. Step by step, you can absolutely get there. And let's find out what Mary Jo had to say in terms of where her courage came from. I got to tell you, I was shoved into it kicking and screaming. Of course. And <laughs> because all of these things, all this stuff and me talking about, you can't be perfect, you're going to look stupid. What do you think that 25 years of corporate career life when right. you hate it is? It's, yep. it's the fact that I wasn't able to cross that until I worked for a very large agency a great agency, by the way, up in Portland after I left the media. 
And I was director of client service, working with Discovery Channel and Ann Taylor and things like that. And clients like that who were just phenomenal, great clients to work with. And 2008, that agency, along with most of the marketing world, went over a cliff. <laughs> yeah, no parachute. No parachute. They did not innovate their product or service enough to compete with internet. And I will tell you, it's an experiential agency. So what that means is we would do live events. So Shark Week or something like that. We would go to Miami Beach and we would do events, live events. It's very expensive to do those things. Mm -hmm. Lots of people are required, lots of logistical hours and things yeah. like that, shipping and whatnot. So they didn't innovate enough at the time and they have now recovered, but it went from 450 people to I think 50 people overnight, nearly Ooh. overnight. Yeah, it was a pretty precipitous fall. And so I found myself... Um, I had gone through uh, a divorce and my sold my home to my ex-husband, a very amicable divorce happily. He wanted to go in a different direction and I did too. And the agency, this was all in a three month period. Oh, wow. So all of a sudden everything went away and it was a, it was absolutely a vacuum and I had no idea, literally no idea what to do. And I thought the state of Maine is spitting me out because I had moved across, <laughs> I had moved 22 times in my adult life and it's a lot of moving and you're just used to it. And I thought, okay, well, this is over. And it was, this is over. So I came back to central to Northern Connecticut where I grew up and I found myself a little cottage and I luckily had some money from the house. And I said, well, what do I do now? And I heard myself saying, oh, well, I'm just going to start a TV show. Because who doesn't? Just, yeah, who doesn't do that, thought. right? Yeah. Who doesn't do that? So, <laughs> told, you know what, Mary Jo, I had that same thought. That's exactly <laughs> it. I, you know, I'm just going to do a TV show. Yeah. I'm just going to make a TV show, and I was like, you know, because I had learned over time uh, producing television and producing uh, feature television, meaning you know more um, sort of programming for Nesson for other places that was not news programming. I can do this. And I went to uh, a TV station in Springfield, Mass., which is a fairly small market, so I could get away with this. And I said, I want to make a TV show. And because I had been a producer, they actually listened to me, <laughs> And <Right>. I, <laughs> surprisingly enough. And the, the head of the station took his magazine, which was all the local businesses in the area, and he threw it at me. And he goes, okay, there's your list. And... I made a TV show and I made that station a quarter of a million bucks in some short period of time. And they were like, wow, this actually works. And <laughs> Go I said, yeah, because you don't do any business news. You don't focus on entrepreneurs in this area or what they're doing. And they all have cool stuff to say. And they're p paying for the privilege of doing that. What does that teach you? That teaches you that these people need a platform for their voice. And so I created that and all of those people became clients. And that's how I started the agency. That's awesome. I mean, <laughs> I mean but at, at the same time, I, I want everyone to hear, you know, out of those proverbial ashes and fire and out of emergency, things emerge. And then you didn't know, you couldn't have scripted any of this. No. You just no. went with that, the those impulses that say, hey, this is the direction. I'm sure most of the people listening today woke up and said, you know what, I'm going to start a TV show. <laughs> uh, but you were the one that said, I'm going to do it. And you went and got it done. And that's the thing. At the end of the day, we all get those ideas that are just out there, or at mm -hmm. least they say sound out there to us but you had the courage to actually follow it through so give us a little bit now that you you've got some things going tell us a little bit more what does client cycle marketing do for clients and, and who is that person and who do you do it for we work with entrepreneurs and my particular job is to help them get their story out there in a big way so I have, in my travels, in my career, you haven't even heard any about this stuff, but I have done book publicity. I have, as, par, as a former member of the media, I understand what it's like to be on television and what, how annoying it is for PR people to harangue you all the time. But how does it, what is the way to actually get, the, get somebody on TV and get, be successful about it? So Client Cycle Marketing is founded on the idea that everyone has a story. 
And my partner, Michael, uh, is a sales guy, straight up sales guy. He teaches people about taking that story that we've created and you can call it a brand. You can call it, uh, your 11 second elevator speech. It unfolds into everything you're doing Mm -hmm. and he takes it and unfolds it into your sales conversation. How does that work? How are you effectively showing, telling who you are, showing the results of that, asking for the business all the while people think it's a, think it's a warm cup of cocoa and a foot rub and you're, (laughs) it's not annoying. It's not salesy. It's not any of those things. Cause I could, I did not understand that I was selling. I didn't understand that, but I was because that's what I was doing. I was sharing my story. I was telling them and giving them confidence. You can do this because I never wanted to be in front of a camera ever, ever. Here's a secret, Mary Jo. Just between me, you, and, you know, the thousands listening, (laughs) I I still don't want to be in front of the camera or the microphone. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. (laughs) It's just part of what the mission requires is that somebody's got to do it. And Mm -hmm. you know, for whatever reason, I'm, I'm, I was nominated. So, and I continue to Mm -hmm. do it and I've had to develop the skill set because I am naturally introverted and shy. You take me to a party Mm -hmm. and I'm going to find the darkest corner cheese and crackers and be quite happy about it. That's right. That's Mm -hmm. just the way it is. However, when you've got something to say or more important people that you can help, the mission is bigger than yourself and you've got to go out there and tell that story. So well, let me let me drop this on you just for a small second. Mm-hmm. We deal with a number of new, you know, either real estate investors or investors in general or people starting their business. And so when someone comes to you and says something like, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, what, what are they really saying? How do you hear that? What, what do we how do we work around? Because, so, you know, like I know. If you don't mm-hmm. educate, you're never going to dominate. You can't attract the individuals to you. So uh, how do we get through that part? There is a, you know, when people talk about not being on video, not being on camera, not doing, you know, not doing this kind of a thing that, that will, you know, cause they're afraid of the haters and they're afraid of what if, That's what if true. someone sees me that, you know, and I'm saying something that is wrong or, you know, because we make mistakes, okay? Yeah. You're gonna make mistakes. Just just be aware of that's how... The situation is, it used to be five years ago when I, when I was, you know, or seven years ago, actually, I've had this agency for seven years. It was kind of a, um, uh, an option. You could decide to do it or not. But now your customers are demanding it. They're, it they are not giving you a choice anymore. So my goal is to help you see within the hash marks of your own personality, how can we, because I don't want to turn you into a circus clown because guess what? <laughs> That's not who you are. Right. You're, you're and authenticity is a very overused buzzword this, these days, but for a good reason, because if you are yourself, I know I have attracted all kinds of amazing people to me. I have a woman calling me from Miami who's written this amazing book and I'm going to get to make a TV show for her. I did not go out there and solicit that, but I wish I had because she's so awesome. She heard me speaking one day and came to me. So I was had enough courage to get up there and speak, get on these calls and do podcasts and do radio shows and do TV shows because I want to expand my capability of just the one-to-one call I want to expand my ability to do that. So for everybody out there who's saying they can't do it, I have a story for you. His name is Paul and he is a plumber and he is the, the plumber, Paul, the plumber literally is the most (laughs) introverted guy. Okay. He never wants to talk to people. He barely can sell himself, blah, blah, blah. I have him doing video. Okay. Because I inspired something in him. He loves what he does and he is so damn good at it. And that little spark in there, he loves to educate people about what he does because he is sick and tired, even though it's probably sent his kid to college. He is sick and tired of coming into someone's house and going, oh, my God, this was totally preventable. Right. And so I have him saying, oh, so I'm like, OK, Paul, guess what? You're going to take that cell phone. And when you go down into the basement and you see that ring around the toilet on the bottom there and you know what's going to happen in three months. I want you to shoot that and say, 
Go down into your basement right now and look underneath your plumbing. If you see this, I want you to call me right now because I'm going to save you 10 grand if you see that and you call me today. Nice. And he, he's got a ton of client. And look, that is a very good example of somebody who is running a sort of a mom and pop operation, how they can use video. There are examples, you know, sometimes people come and they're like, well, I don't, I'm a service guy. I don't really, I don't have a physical thing I can show. So video is not my thing. And it's a good excuse, but you are what you're showing, <laughs> right? You, right. It's your expertise that you need to teach. You need to share. Well, that's why they pay me. But guess what? They're still going to pay you. They're still going to pay you because you have the body of knowledge. A tip is not the body of knowledge. Right. You, you have, you have a much bigger skill set. You see how it all fits together. Those are the things they're going to pay you to do. Well, it, it, you're bringing up some really, I, I'm just excited because you're bringing up some really interesting points that I want, I, I'm afraid that someone might miss because I know someone somewhere said, cause I know you guys, you're saying, well, Jay, I don't want to sell and real estate. I just want to be this small little, you know, over here. I'm not trying to take over the world. I don't really have to do this. You know, that sounds like a whole lot of extra work and all of these things. I know that's what you're saying. And you can write me later saying, yes, Jay, that was me. I was. That. <laughs> that's completely fine i just want you to hear plumber is local too he's not trying to take over he's not trying to be a roto rooter or you know any of the other names you might know that are nationwide and large no he's not trying to do that he put his kid to college he's trying to mm -hmm. you know build his life and we still all are subject to this in, in various different levels and forms so and 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 service i, I love that one too i mean would you say then in order to do you know to be the entrepreneur that could benefit from this that you would have to develop an abundance mentality because that's kind of what i'm hearing yeah oh for sure i i 100 subscribe to that i think that what what you need to understand is the way people purchase today is different than the way people purchased uh even 10 years ago the way they're purchasing today is do do you have the expertise that is the first challenge but do i want to work with you I, if I don't want to work with you, if you don't resonate with me, if what you're saying feels foreign to me, and I'm not saying that you're giving me tough love because tough love can work too, because right. I have a, I have a coach that I work with who says playing it small is playing it broke. And <laughs> she believes she does believe in pushing people to play big, like but her he, already, like her already. Exactly. But what she's saying is if you're trying to keep things small, what you're doing is you're hiding your light from the world. That is your job. Your job is to, what happens if it gets big? Are you terrified of that? I think that's worth exploring. Because if you think you're putting yourself out there and you're going to become this huge thing and you don't want that, I think it's a good thing to look at. Yeah, um, yeah. I really do. I you know, what's, what's funny is that when we're afraid, and I've said this before, but when we're when when we're afraid, I think any excuse will do, and <laughs> we we just we'll take the one that's that our friends yeah. will justify. If our friends mm -hmm. can nod their head to that one, that's the one we like. Yeah, that's the for reason. Sure, for sure. And we just we just ride that pony until someone says otherwise. So yeah, yeah. What would you say is the number one thing in the way of? the entrepreneurs actually going out there to do this. I mean, obviously, because this is this has been something of a transition, you know, for for us. I started out as a real estate only. That's all I did is just real estate. Uh -huh. I had no database, no email, no website, nothing, nothing at, at all. And then one day uh, through the desire to document the process that I'd been going through for my kids, a friend said, hey, I bet you adults would be interested in that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, good point. And we just start. In fact, you can go back to listen to episode one. You'll, you'll hear. <laughs> uh, so right. I just started trying to document this thing. And slowly over time, I've learned that, oh, my gosh, I should have been doing this a long, long time ago because 
this it helps all facets of the business and it feels good mm-hmm. to share the story and I've, i and, and again i'm not saying i'm perfect at sharing it but we've gotten better mm-hmm. i just want you to talk about what prevents people from doing it and just really how necessary it is at all levels cuz i've grown to now understand that it's necessary at all levels but i want to hear it in your words well it from my just from my you know uh circle the people i've dealt with the people who have said no. There is a million reasons to say no. There are a million reasons to say no. The only reason to say yes is that you would be miserable doing anything else. And you know that your job, you have a thing. And how can you use that thing? You really need to understand that there are people out there who need you. You're, you know, a lot of, uh, I work with a lot of female entrepreneurs who have this particular problem that they don't think they have anything anybody needs or they're afraid because you can't build a business without spending a little money and sometimes a lot of money. I've spent a lot of money, but you can't, you can't build a business without spending that money. And they do not, they think it's selfish to spend money on themselves or they think that, um, you know, it's vain or arrogant for them to think that what they have is worth someone worth spending money on. And let me tell you, that will stop you every single time because if you don't think it's worth somebody paying for it, then you're not going to have a very easy time selling it because what you're doing is you're asking people to give you money for that skill. And that to me is, a, is the foundational element. I've, I've had to negotiate a lot of things with people to try and get them over that hump. Like you have something, you have to see it. I have to show you that you have something of value here. And every single one of us paired your, not only your education and the formal learning you have, but your experience with that formal learning to make something new. You're adding your personality, you're adding your thing. Even if you're like, for example, you're an accountant, you have been an accountant for 28 years. You, you have experience of working with all of those clients in those corporate environments or out of those in corporate environments. You have your own philosophy that you have. You, there's no way you cannot have evolved your own philosophy about things. There's just no way. So why not give the people what they want? Those people need your help. And believe me, they are, the the cool thing is the barrier to entry is very low now because we can find each other on the internet, these great podcasts, we can hear each other speaking. Boy, the media really had it wrangled for a long period of time until, until the world came along and changed. And now you have an opportunity. Uh, 20 years ago, cameras were $30,000. I could never have done what I've done. (laughs) Right? Well, well, there are cameras that are still $30,000. It's just that an (laughs) iPhone 6 does the same thing. So (laughs) yeah, yeah, (laughs) that's that's right. I, I, and that's the, I mean, we have a a studio, um, Mary Jo, that allows us to uh, I can do mobile live broadcasting, literally awesome. mobile live broadcasting, just me and it literally, if I want to go bare bones, me and one other guy can do it. We prefer me and one other person and wow. we can carry all the stuff in two bags on our back uh, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. broadcast from anywhere. There's a cell phone signal and mm-hmm. do it live. And we, you know, we do a lot of that bro- live broadcasting stuff for our members. And I think about that. I think about the barrier to injury. Is, yeah. is, I mean, you can have a, a, a someone in high school right now is building a YouTube following, Twitter following, I guess this new one with sure. Periscope and Meerkat. Yeah. I mean, all of these things. I mean, the, Meerkat and Periscope is live news broadcasting. That's how I yep. look at it. I'm yep. just like, oh my gosh. Yeah, all you got to do is have a, a Periscope account and you are now just as good as the news. In fact, you're less filtered. But that's a whole yeah. other story. We're not going to yeah. talk about that. No. The, 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 <laughs> All I'm saying is you're saying that the time is never been it's never been easier mm-hmm. and the, the only thing that's truly in our way. Yeah, I mean cuz at least you could point. He's like I don't have 30 grand for the camera. Uh, and everybody would go, "Yeah, you know what?" Yeah, that's I, right. I don't either. Mm-hmm. But now you go, "Well, do you have a phone?" Mhm. Uh-huh. Right. Now you got no excuse. Now you got no excuse. None. I mean, honestly, none. I mean, people still people still use that barrier with me all the time. I don't have money to set up a whole studio. Well, guess what? If you have a phone or you have a computer with a webcam, you can uh, get a, you know, if iMovie that comes with your computer, <laughs> you can, you can be a television station. Right. 
Okay, think right. about that, the magnitude right. of that. You need an iPhone and a selfie stick and a That's it. mic. That's it. Uh, you don't even yeah, you don't even really need a mic but to get the better audio, just the mic. A, a self it's a $9 selfie stick. You're you're in business. You're baby. in business and a microphone, I mean, the one thing people uh-huh. will not forgive is, is bad audio. That's true. And so you really need to pay attention to that, but those are $9, $15. I, it's Stop, crazy. honestly. Stop. I know, right? And and I'm I'm list, I'm on my iPhone right now, and I have my little earbuds in. And w- with the earbuds, a microphone comes with the earbuds in that little <laughs> part of it. You really don't even have an excuse. Oh gosh! Oh, uh, somebody's like, dang it! They're taking away all my excuses. <laughs> this is not fair. That's right. It's because we know that you've got something to share. We know that you had that business idea for a reason. Right. You started that business not to, you know, so that you mm-hmm. could eat, so that you didn't have to go to, to work. I, like you, Mary Jo, figured it took me a while, though. It took me a while to figure out that I was horrible working for some of, someone else. It, it, it really did. Oh, yeah. But yeah. once I got it, I was like, oh, I shouldn't do this. I'm a horrible employee. You know, yeah. You shouldn't yeah. hire me. Let me tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was it was stuff like that. But and. But learning to develop these new skill sets is scary. You clearly have done it, and you've walked people through this gauntlet. And having your experience, you are uniquely qualified to walk someone through, you know, putting their first videos online, building that YouTube channel, or, or whatever, mm-hmm. however they're going to use video. you got to let us know. If, if someone wants to begin to find out, you know, all right, Mary Jo, I believe you. I should take a step forward. <laughs> Give us what what how can they get in contact with you today so that they can get that process started? Because I know, like you know, the law of diminishing intent is about to take over here where right. they're like, yes, yes, I should, I should. But if you don't give them away, they're, they're, they may not take it. Well, I'm going to make it super easy and have give you no reason, <laughs> no <laughs> barrier to entry. You don't have to go anywhere or download anything. Um, I'm going to give you a phone number. And the phone number is this, 860 860- 709-4216. Write it down. I'll give it to you again in a minute. Because I what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna what I'm saying right now is I'm giving everybody uh an opportunity to ask their questions, uh, to get through some of these barriers, to figure out how they can start. Just get started. I'm gonna help you do that. So if you call that number, I'm giving a 30-minute uh, strategy sessions, which I do for new clients. When I, when I bring on new clients, I give, I do a strategy session with them. This is pretty much the same thing and I'm giving it to you for free. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about where you are and a little bit of my strategic marketing obviously flows into these conversations. It's not just about video. Um, and many times I recommend a couple things that happen before you get to video, but what I'm going to suggest you do is you start video uh, and how you can start it. I'm going to give you some assignments. I'm going to give you ways of thinking about it. I'm going to not care about the blocks that you have. <laughs> and and I'm going to um, try and help you see uh, what value will be uh, proffered through those videos and how you can make that happen for yourself. Excellent. Thank you very much. Now, uh, much like I did earlier in the show, I just want to let everybody know a phone is what we used before Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Periscope, <laughs> Snapchat, Instagram, LinkedIn, etc. So hopefully you can still find this technology available uh, to be able to dial those 10 digits and give Mary Jo a call. Now, I have a final question for you, if you will. Okay. Um, there's likely someone listening who is, you know, we'll say they're standing in front of the superhero outfit store right now. They're like, mm, I bet you I can. And they're probably looking up, you know, the color of the cape and wanting, should I wear a mask or not? <laughs> no know, capes. They, no yeah, capes. right, right. We learned that very well. We learned that. No capes. <laughs> uh, but they're, 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 they're still trying to pick out their outfit, figure out, can I, can I, should I, will it? Oh, I hear what she's saying. And that would be a great way to reach customers, but I just don't know. What would you say to that person who has that fire inside of them, but has not yet fully embraced it? Well, I will say this. I will say, take consistent action. And the the important word, there's all of those three words are very important. Consistent action, not just taking action, but taking consistent action is going to move you towards something. So you're going to you're going to record 
uh, or I'm going to get you to the place where you're going to record a video or two. And then you're going to go, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. No one's seeing it. Nothing's <laughs> happening. And then you're going to make that evidence that it doesn't work. And I'm here to tell you what we do, our work together is to give you a roadmap so you can see ahead. Okay, I'm going to have to do this for six months. It's going to become part of my routine. Just like if you get all upset that you're 20 pounds overweight and you go down and you do furious amounts of, of uh, burpees and pull-ups and stuff and you're like, I'm still pound, 20 pounds overweight. Yeah, that's right. It didn't happen overnight. And, but it, you didn't get that way overnight either. So you've got to understand that consistent action is, is what my recommendation is. That's the only thing that's going to help you move forward. Uh, and you've got to see that vision. What gets you out of bed in the morning is the vision. It's not like even the smaller things of paying off the bills or sending a kid to college. Those are awesome goals. But what's your vision? What's the what does it look like? What is the life that you want look like? That's the thing that's going to pull you through uh, fretting over credit card bills or making debt or fretting over, you know, a million things that are going to go wrong and they're going to go wrong. You just can't have this utopian view because you'll be. That'll, that will stop you. If you have a utopian view, that's for sure what's going to stop you. Absolutely agreed. Well, Mary Jo, I, I definitely appreciate you taking the time to invest with us here at the Cashflow Diary. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for you to move at the speed of instruction. What does that mean? That means get over to clientcyclemarketing.com. That means call her on the phone. Take a step. You're listening on the phone. Just call 860-709-4216. Done. Do it. How difficult could that be? I know this. I know that you heard something. I know some of you have been wondering, how on earth can I get started? Attract more investors and make things happen. This is probably a good way to begin building that cash flow for yourself as well. Guys, it's been fun talking to you today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time.